Hey guys, welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video. And today we will be going over the 1.20 update, at least highlighting some of the topics that were covered in the notes, which I will publish below this video. Of course, the release was very late at night on Tuesday for those on the West Coast and very early in the morning for us here on the East Coast. But nonetheless, guys, we will cover some of the highlights and topics from the notes, as well as I will go into the game itself to kind of highlight some of the features that were anticipated and what were covered in the notes themselves. For those of you on PS4 and Xbox, of course, you guys had the data pack download. It was around 15 gigs. And the team mentions that once you install the patch and select a mode like multiplayer or campaign, you'll be brought to a game install menu. From there, you need to download the data pack one from that menu. Once the download is complete, you'll have to hard close and reopen the game application. The team mentions if you guys run into any issues or need support, you can reach out to them on Twitter at ATVI assist. In general fixes, the team mentions that they fixed an audio issue with precision airstrike to ensure that it follows the plane more precisely. I would like to point out that precision airstrikes and VTOLs are still extraordinarily loud in multiplayer, as well as just audio cues that are a little off sometimes. For example, if you've been playing Plunder or Warzone, you'll get the enemy is parachuting in or the notification that an enemy is parachuting in. And oftentimes you won't even see the player anywhere within your vision or on any indicator or for example on your heartbeat sensor you won't see him anywhere but occasionally he'll say enemy is parachuting in and by the time he says the word enemy the enemy is already behind you and you're most likely already dead so we'll see if perhaps the team will address those particular problems as well the team also fixed a bug where players using kbm in-game battles could make custom weapon blueprints that could also be used in multiplayer and warzone it's hard to say if the coding from that is part of what is now the gunsmithing, but nonetheless, it has been fixed. In the notes, we also see the team address a series of exploits in the game, one in particular in Hackney Yard, as well as out-of-bounds exploits. The team also addressed issues with player operators, in particular those with character model problems or just additional issues with their features. For those that were having issues picking their favorite faction in the operator menu, that has been fixed. For me in particular, I noticed that I was always getting the green update indicator despite the fact that I would complete a mission or some sort of assignment. I ended up just using the clear all button down at the bottom to take care of that. But for those that were having problems with their factions or selecting an operator from the menu, that has now been fixed. I'm very happy to see that the team addressed that white lighting issue that many of us would get while moving or firing a weapon near specific locations. I noticed it more often in Plunder and Warzone, and I can't say that I ever experienced it in multiplayer. In the data pack download for you guys on PS4 and Xbox, the team added a gamepad only dead zone option that allows you guys to adjust the inner range in which the stick input will not be registered. A little something that I wanted to mention because I hearken back to my MMORPG days, but the auto run feature that would stop players when they open their text box in game chat has now been corrected. As we mentioned in Monday's community update, the team fixed the completionist challenges for the SKS that were unlocking the associated camos for the Renetti. But what we were experiencing with the Renetti, and maybe you guys experienced it as well, is that when you did get unlocks and additional attachments for the Renetti, we never got the green box indicators letting us know what was actually unlocked. So hopefully this change to the SKS will also fix the Renetti. For those using the Alex operator, and I do enjoy using Alex from time to time, the team fixed a bug where the hardwire skin for Alex would appear in thermals while cold blooded was equipped. There were quite a few changes and some amazing and interesting additions to Warzone. One in particular that was a cause for concern was after being brought back into a match, players were unable to access the team's loadout drop, so I'm happy to see that that has been addressed. That only happened to us, I think, maybe one time playing Warzone, but nonetheless, I could see that being a persistent issue if it wasn't fixed in this update. The team also adjusted the speed and sizing of the circles in Warzone. 
It would appear, and as far as we can tell, they shaved off a few seconds at the very beginning of the game before it goes into the second circle. And then from the second circle on, the team actually added time to the times of when the circles would close. It would appear that the team made some changes to my second favorite vehicle in the game, and that would be the cargo truck. I use it more specifically in Plunder to access those storage areas where there are containers or even contracts on top of the storage areas because it makes it a lot easier to get up there versus trying to find a building and parachute down. But nonetheless, guys, they have added it back into the BR solos, but they reduce the turning speed, acceleration, and top speed, which of course will be felt in Plunder as well. An exciting addition to Warzone and Plunder is the new Armor Satchel. If you find one of these, it will allow you to carry up to 8 armor plates instead of 5. It's important to note here that the Armor Satchel does not come with the 3 additional armor plates. You have to get those yourself. To obtain an Armor Satchel, at least as far as we know in Warzone, you have to complete a Scavenger Contract. So, if you have completed a scavenger contract and you happen to get killed, then a player can loot that satchel from you without having to do the scavenger contract. It's important to note here that those that were doing the scavenger contract who then get gas mask, well, the armor satchel now replaces that gas mask, but the gas mask will remain a rare loot and can still be purchased at a buy station. There was a pretty extensive list of fixes to special operations, but I'll let you guys check those out point by point with the update notes link below this video. Rounding it off for those on PC, the team did fix the Vega 64 GPU issue where it would cause corrupted outlines around their character models and weapons. They also addressed a crash issue for those using the GeForce 900 series. Alright guys, so I wanted to bring you into the game just to highlight a few little neat features, particularly here in the playlist. The gunfight blueprints is basically gunfight, but you're able to use every single form of blueprint weapon that's in the game, including the new fiery knife, which I got killed by last night. Just think of it as like very similar to thermite, right? So when you throw it, the thermite burns you up. Well, this little knife basically acts just like thermite. And of course, you have shoot the ship 24-7, which a lot of people enjoy, particularly if you want to level up some weapons, which I'm probably going to do. But what I really wanted to show you guys here as well, or more importantly, is over here and show you guys how gunsmithing works. So it is kind of a new and neat feature in the game, which I think a lot of you guys will probably appreciate. So basically what you do is when you go into your weapons and say go to a particular attachment, just click on that. And very much like when you're selecting your different guns that have the blueprints already associated with them, it works pretty much the same way. So we're just gonna go down here to this one and we're gonna select the blueprint to the right of the you know, attachment and click on that. And then from here, you can just select whatever particular combination of attachment that that gun comes with. If you wanna do that, I think that's a pretty neat feature. Also, you'll probably notice as you're playing the game, it looks like they added some additional um, icons and features, animations to some of the, uh, you know, like for example, the field upgrades has some kind of new animation features to it, but you'll probably discover some really neat features. And something that I left out in Warzone to mention to you guys is now, of course, they have that new contract where if you select that particular contract, teams within the vicinity or within the area that you're fighting can hunt you down and i'm not sure that the reward is really worth it and the reward of course is for your team to be able to come back into the game should you guys get killed but in reality it lasts about five minutes and within five minutes you can probably just go and just find the money but it probably is just there to encourage fighting and engaging uh with other players within war it's kind of an kind of an interesting little risk reward feature that they've added into the game so you can see they've got quads trios solos and then the plunder trios but as you can see also as i click on them there's just they've just made some really neat uh changes to the ui and functionality which we're going to see throughout the game and i'm looking forward to getting in and playing a little bit more to see what all the particular changes they're going to have within the game and what additional changes they buy with the 1.20 update, we also saw the introduction of the Bruin MK9556. To unlock the Bruin, you will need to get 3 kills when the enemy is near smoke using the LMG in 15 different matches. 
A lot of people have compared it very similarly to the Holger, but nonetheless, it is kind of a saw variant, but I am looking forward to checking it out and I probably will work towards trying to unlock it. Getting those three kills near smoke isn't gonna be a big deal as I'm trying to unlock the Holger, but nonetheless, guys, we have a brand new weapon, the Bruin MK9556. And rounding out the notes, guys, of course, we see the release of the newest camo, which is Obsidian. Now, for me personally, I have not really prioritized any sort of camo, but I know you guys really enjoy that type of grind, that kind of carrot on the stick direction, but it would appear that Obsidian camo is going to require a lot of kills just for one particular weapon. So if you're willing to put in the effort and put in the grind, then by all means, you can definitely pursue the obsidian camo but it will be one of the newest additions to the game for me personally i don't really find it something worth working towards i mean considering what it actually looks like but nonetheless i know you guys kind of see it as a prestigious thing and so of course you guys are more than welcome to pursue that uh, i might pursue some other types of uh, camos and or even complete the ones that i have here but nonetheless yes obsidian camo was introduced into this particular update my apology guys for some of the audio clipping and equalization that happened during that segment but nonetheless guys that's pretty much going to cover everything within the 1.20 update i want to thank all you guys for your continued support here on the channel to include those who watch me on dtube and bitshoot i would encourage you guys to give me a follow there and of course, for all of you here on YouTube, that would be the obligatory channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe. You can click on that as well as notifications. That way you guys will have all the information regarding Infinity Ward, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Warzone, and Plunder.